um, this early in the morning. Um, I'm going to be talking about startup thinking for journalists and newsrooms. Um, I'm uh, the head of VRT Startup, which is an innovation hub of the VRT, which is the public broadcaster at, uh, in Belgium. And um, I'm also the, the founder of Journalism Tools, and I will be talking about that a little bit uh, uh, at the end of this presentation. So VRT, for those that don't know what it is, it's the, the public service broadcaster in Belgium, and we're very good at, at making television and very good at making radio. We're not that great yet at doing online things. And a few years ago, uh, people at the board of directors, they kind of realized that the same thing, you know, like we're very good at this, this leg legacy uh, thing, like making television and radio, but we're not so good in, in uh, online, and, and we have this huge operation, uh, more than 2,000 people work in that building actually, uh, how to shift such a legacy operation from being um, television and radio minded to a more digital oriented um, organization. So they went on a very nice and a very expensive trip to um, Silicon Valley to study how startups did it. So they all went to Silicon Valley and they were amazed about the speed of change that was happening there. and. Uh, the, 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 the good thing was that after, when they came back, they kind of realized we need our own startup. We need a, a, a kind of mechanism that works as fast as lean as a startup. So they created VRT Startup and we're there somewhere <laughs> behind. In a very, we're a very small team of, of, of four people. We have a certain budget, but the thing is that we can move much quicker, much faster than, um, than VRT because we're not part of the, the bigger structure. We don't have to work for the sp specific brands. We don't have to work for, uh, think about television and radio. We can just experiment and see what could be working for the next generation. And to make it a bit easier, I brought a little movie to show what we do. Hello, we're VRT Startup, and we're on a mission. Our goal is to put VRT, public broadcaster in Flanders, front and center again in the lives of the people who have grown up with the internet. We want to provide the YouTube generation with new digital content and formats. Look around you. The world is changing. Radio and TV schedules are no longer ruling our lives. No, nowadays it's all about Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, more recently Instagram and Snapchat. Young people want to enjoy media at their own pace and in their own environment. The key for staying relevant and original in a world like this VRT can't lag behind, otherwise we risk losing the connection with our audience. Not only do we need to change the way we think, we also need to change our language and processes. We need to experiment without the limitations of the current practices, brands, or formats. VRT Startup offers VRT new ways to fulfill its public mission. We are independent without being tied to the existing brands and structures. We have our own spot, our own team, and our own way of doing things. VRT Startup looks for collaboration in new ways with young creatives. We also work in an agile way. We start small and put our ideas into simple prototypes. Then we present these prototypes to a target audience, and from this method we learn quickly and respond with adjustments to our ideas on the fly. That's the process we keep on repeating until a new finished product emerges. <laughs> What we develop includes new digital content, new formats, new products. VRT Startup focuses on the domains that need disruption, whether that's news, education, entertainment, or science. When an idea reaches maturity, it is then handed over to VRT. There, it will continue to live on its own within VRT's portfolio. We are always working at building a new kind of ecosystem of talent, tools, and knowledge. VRT Startup doesn't stay under the radar. During our development process, we take our products on the road and reach out to as many users and creative minds as possible. There's no doubt we'll cross each other very soon on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, or anywhere online. from three years ago. <laughs> um, 
Thank you so much for the, the promotion. Um, as you can see, we're not only working for news, we're really working for the whole VRT, which means also fiction entertainment. Uh, but the first thing we wanted to do, and, and the, at the prime, one of the, the, the core missions of, of uh, a public broadcast is, of course, news information. So that was one of our first missions. And um, the way we work is really a, a new way to make new news products, formats, and, and concepts, and I, and I hope that's certainly a takeaway for you guys if, if you come out of here. Um, we work with things that are very, uh, very a common practice in startups, um, working with design thinking or lean processes, which um, I will go further in detail, but th there are five steps, like there's the empathy with the user, you kind of have to work for the user, not for yourself. You really have to know what are their needs and get insights about that. And from that insights, you develop ideas the ideas you really quickly prototype, and from and after the prototyping, you go directly back to your users to see if it's if it's really what they want. Because um, you, you make a lot of assumptions, and most of the times these assumptions are just not they don't hold when you confront it to the user. Um, and in the beginning, our first mission was to connect again with a younger audience because that was what we were very bad at at VRT. We have a uh, an older audience that uh, follows the news, the television news and the radio news, we're not that great in connecting with young people. So we went out there, talked a lot with young people like you can see in this image. Uh, a lot of these things happen uh, in duo, so we, we talk with two people at the same time, uh, as well from the interviewing side as the people we interview, because we notice if you um, interview them with two, then they kind of fill the gaps in their in each other's story and they're less reluctant to kind of uh, admit that they're downloading things illegally or things like this or they, they kind of uh, admit more behavior than than you would get in a, in a normal standard interview and uh, the goal of course of, of these interviews is to get a, a better idea of their media behavior or their media needs so we start to kind of get our insights from this like you can see here a day in the life of a, an 18 year old girl uh, she stands, uh, she, she gets up, she checks her Facebook, sh uh, she checks in on, on uh, Instagram, things like this. It kind of gives us a schedule of, of a, a new media user and how the gaps we have at our organization, how we should fill that in uh, as a news uh, room. Um, and from there on, with the most important insights, the most important domains, we start this very broad ideation. And there, the more ideas, the better. Um, this was uh, a recent one where we ended up with 200 IDs, but as you can see, they're all quick and dirty. And that's really uh, the, the, the whole idea about it is you don't work a half year on a strategy and then you work half year on a perfect product. No, you work on this kind of shitty sketches because the good thing about the fact that they're so crappy is that you can throw them away directly. If somebody doesn't like it, you just throw them in a the paper bin and uh, you, go on, you move on to the next one. So the whole idea is that you um, can quicker assess what's working, what's not working. And with these uh, good ideas, you make a first selection of things you, you think is valuable for your organization. And then you move on to, to your users and you give them a little bit better sketch, but still something you could do in 10 minutes. Uh, something that um, makes them understand what the product is about, how it would work but still easy enough to throw away. And then again, you go to your users. Um, and lately, we, I, we started for young people, but lately we also uh, work for what we call the silver surfers because we, we noticed that, of course, that uh, also this generation is going online. They're actually the, the, the biggest growers on Facebook are silver surfers. Um, and we still think we can only, only serve them with uh, radio and television, and that's not true. They're also just online, and we're not doing anything for them because we think online is just for young people. So there again, we're, not, we're failing our mission to inform them. So th these two kind of ways of thinking, the design thinking, and then the lean process of, of building something, directly measuring if it works, and from that experience, learning what you should uh, change about it, that we do a lot of times, like in, in sprints of weeks, one week, two weeks, we change the product until it really fits. So you might think, okay, this is this, it's great for building products, uh, but I'm actually convinced that it's, it's also a process 
that's broader than just um, building products. So we use it for um, assessing stories, for checking or changing the culture of your organization, for looking at processes that are uh, existing for years and, and, and uh, a way to change these things as well. So this is very theoretically, so I, I move on to a few examples that we have done in the past and that we are doing right now at this moment. So the first and first mission of year one, I think two years or three years ago, was give VRT an essential place in the life of the YouTube generation. Um, for news, and it, should, it has to be a digital product. And we made two assumptions based on the interviews we did with these young people. The first one was, as a media brand, you cannot expect them to come anymore to you and visit your platform. You have to go to them. So that was the first challenge, because until then, we just expected them to come to us. And the second thing was that um, on social media, they are overwhelmed with the amount of content that's there, and uh, they need a kind of filter or a way to kind of uh, a curation, and, and we might be a, a good, in a good place to do that. So that were two things that we had as a basic assumptions, and we started thinking like, what kind of product can we make? And we ended up, with, this is the first prototype with something very stupid called Six Things, and the, IT was really basic, a daily edition for the six most interesting things for young people in a digital format. And um, very easy, every day we put out six things. Um, it was a very basic IT and it was not good at all. Um, we put it on a Facebook page, which we called six things, not very inspiring. But the good thing is it didn't take very long to come up with this IT and to make it the IT. Um, and we could directly test it with a, a, a young audience, uh, but of course it didn't work the way we, we wanted. Uh, because first of all, young people don't wait until the end of the day to get six things to be updated. So already there, six things was also a bad name, it didn't have a, a lot of appeal. There were a lot of things that didn't, um, didn't work with this. So we started changing, pivoting, and that's something very essential for the lean way of working, the startup way of working is directly checking what's not working and changing it directly. So we did four things that, that changed with this ID. First was publication rhythm. So from editions, where we had one edition a day, we moved on to a flow because that made more sense to, to our audience to have a continuous flow of, uh, of IDs, not waiting until six o'clock, like the six o'clock news or seven o'clock news, no. When, some, when we had content, we pushed it out into the flow, into their flow, and that was something that was more um, what they wanted. As you can see, we changed also a little bit the look and the label of things. It was not anymore six things, but it became sambal. Um, sambal is a label that gives a little bit more flavor. It's a kind of spicy thing. You can imagine that it's a little bit more spicy and edgy than just, um, yeah, than, than just six things. So again, and it gave us the, the opportunity to start building a, an identity. And it's very important, if you're not on your own platform anymore, that you have an identity that you can take away or that you can bring onto social. Because if you're on Facebook and you, you need a kind of thing that's uh, coming together with your content. And, and as a simple example, I show you a, a small uh, gimmicky uh, thing that we did. Uh, we slowed down a few of the, the news and, uh, and, and television programs. But what's important is that there is an ident, that there is an identity in the movie. Ware blessures meer small in Parijs Nice and Jurgen van der Broek in the Tireno Adriatico. Well, best to look at. Je zult het waarschijnlijk al wel gevoeld hebben. Het is minder fris dan gisteren. Ik had gisteren beloofd dat we een top croque madame gingen maken. Dus dat gaan we dat ook doen. Goedemiddag. Er wordt zuiver en gezonde zeerlucht aangevoerd als het goede nieuws. Nee, ik was op strand. Dus. En uh, toen werd ik gebeld. Zo, so, 
The only thing I wanted to show you here is if this moves on social, if it, it travels around, everybody will know that it's from Sambal. Because the ident it's part the identity is part of the movie, part of the clip, and that's very important, something that we learned during the process of making this thing. Then again, the content. In the beginning, six things was just an aggregation of the best six things around on the internet. We just yeah, picked up what was there, a bit like BuzzFeed did kind of with lists and things like this. But then we, yeah, we realized we were always late. You know, like we're VRT, we're not the fastest, we're not the ones picking up good stuff the first, so we're always late, um, and that's lame. So we started uh, realizing that we had to come up with our own content, things that it, yeah, if we make it, we're always first, you know, like uh, it, it's original content, it's things that you make yourself, and it's also more appealing to people. So we started looking uh, for ways to uh, make news more digestible in creative ways and also a bit more funny uh, because it was aimed to really younger people, uh, 14, 16 years old. Um, so it, it should be something they could uh, uh, relate to. So when Obama, Barack Obama visited uh, Belgium, we kind of made a, a four square page for him with his check-in history and uh, all the badges he unlocked, you know, like he killed uh, Osama bin Laden, that was a badge he unlocked. Uh, there was Obamacare, that was a badge he unlocked. And you could find out something about Barack Obama through his four square, uh, imaginary Foursquare page. So it was a format that, that uh, he kind of, that kind of worked for this, uh, this generation. Um, as you can see here, that's, that's the article that was related to it, where you see the same badges with small, uh, small info, infographics and small information uh, around it. But the, the, the important thing is that we move from curation to creation, because that's where you, you really uh, make value. And we found out that the ideal mix for Sambal at that moment was a, a word we call beslag, uh, which is a content that's sometimes beautiful, that's sometimes entertaining, that has a serious component, but also uh, laughter in it that is sometimes just amazing and also a little bit geeky because we didn't do any tech stuff or like the, the, the six, uh, six cheap smartphones for young people. That's kind of content we would never bring as VRT News, but that was very important for them, of course. So that's a, a way we, we also uh, started thinking about uh, our own content and we always looked for uh, an original angle uh, to news, um, something like this also. Mr. President, your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. So it's beautiful, entertaining, oh, uh, beautiful, entertaining, serious, lol, uh, so laughter, amazing, and geeky. And amazing, you should think it's more, it's kind of a, the Red Bull factor, you know, like uh, exciting stuff. Um. Mr. President, your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, the American sons who felt on our soil are our sons. I promise you, Mr. President, that we will always keep their memory alive. And at the same time, we will never forget our second World War liberators. They, as well, were examples of courage. We are determined to ensure the train, 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 train front of peace, democracy, and human rights. We are determined to ensure the integrity of frontiers and the respect of international law. Here, next to these graves, we make a solemn, solemn commitment to continue our efforts to promote peace and solidarity amongst people. Mr. President, Your Majesty, the guns fell silent a long time ago, as did the voices of the fallen soldiers, but their example will always continue to inspire us. So again, it was a way for them. I, they actually watched the whole video, the whole speech of uh, our prime minister, which they would never have done. You could argue that uh, maybe some things get lost, but uh, we get them engaged with news, and if they wanted more, 
uh, it's a step up, it's a younger generation, and it's a step up to news, and it's a connection to a VRT as a brand where they can find these kind of, of things. So, um, and the last thing we uh, started looking at was the formats. We uh, started looking at formats that would really work on social, things that are now more common, but uh, you have to think back um, three, four years ago, this was uh, fairly new, like um, video without audio, things that work very visual. So we developed a, a format that we called uh, Ninja News at that time, and that was made for Instagram and Snapchat. At the time, you could still hack Snapchat and, and put your own content on there, and uh, for Facebook. So I give you a small example of, of one of these very short videos. The opposition Hindu nationalist BJP party is heading for a landslide win in India's general elections. The ruling Congress party has already admitted defeat. It's the most commanding victory India has seen in more than a quarter century. So very short, 15 seconds. It's more common now, but three years ago it was uh, kind of a new thing. We did, we kind of released it at the same time that B BBC was doing Instafax, but it was at the same, really at the same moment. I think we both uh, notice what now this was doing in America, we kind of uh, saw what was happening there. So again, with simple infographics, a very quick a way to, uh, to make compelling uh, compelling content. And the good thing is because we really make this as a startup, where we're not part of the newsroom, not part of the organization. So until this moment, it was just a prototype, it was something that lived somewhere, but it was not real. And then the, the, the true challenge is, of course, to bring it over, hand it over to the organization. And uh, we kind of uh, br brought it into the organization uh, at m and which is a radio station. And they, as you can see, they kind of rebranded it, made it into their own format, and now it lives as Eminem Ninja News. So it became a part of our radio brand and a way for them to present news to a younger generation. So uh, you see, through these iterations, like four kind of uh, quick iterations of, of what's working and not working, we kind of change uh, the product. So now the the bigger challenge came, and that's something that uh, is actually quite fresh, is uh, this, new, uh, this year we started something that's called the News Hub, and, um, which is part of a bigger change in the news organization. And the big question is how do you change a newsroom of 400, 500 people who are dedicated to radio and television? There's a very small online department so how do you start, um, because until then we were not part of the organization, we were kind of outsiders, we can do what we want in our little play garden with our sample thing and uh, funny stuff. But from the moment you, yeah, you enter the serious newsroom, they're kind of, okay guys, what are you doing here? Uh, editorial standards, uh, I don't know what uh, you're gonna talk about. Um, this, we have to keep this in check. So we directly realized that we would need an, a new approach to change uh, this kind of process for, for the newsroom. Um, and then you, you come at this kind of thing, which is innovation at two speeds. Um, at one, in, in one way you want incremental innovation, which means that um, the existing products, you yeah, make them better, a little bit better every day, very gradually, so everybody can kind of follow what you're doing and they kind of understand what you're doing. And, 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 and everybody sees the value of that. And on the other side, you need really disruptive innovation, things that go uh, much faster, that are ahead of the curve, and that may be a bit strange at first, um, but that will only work in a newsroom if you do the first thing as well, if they can see something very valuable, direct impact on their process, because if you only do disruptive innovation on the news floor, you lose them. They will look at you like the weird developers and coders and whatever you are in a newsroom and they will not understand what you're doing and how it relates to their work. So um, that was a very important insight for us. Make it tangible, make it uh, something they directly see impact of. And that's also why we decided to create mixed teams. So we had a news impact team, 
that would show impact directly on the work floor, and with a news lab that would be more disruptive, more looking ahead uh, into the future, look uh, to what we should do maybe in a few years or uh, in a few months. So the news impact team, you, as you can see, it's a bit greeny. Uh, that means that there were also people from the newsroom in there. And the a blue team, that's a bit more blue because that's more the startup and that's more the, the part that came outside of the newsroom. But it, it kind of blends into each other and it's a mixed team where um, that's sitting on the news floor. So we're not anymore outsiders, we're in the newsroom. We're doing it together with people they trust. So they don't have to trust us, they have to trust the people in our team. And, and that's really working for us. And it, the, I, I feel like the ideal mix, and we have a mixed team, is like one third newsroom, one third of your innovation, developers, experts, and one third freelancers, because sometimes you need these kind of yeah, specialist experts that you don't have. We didn't have a, a very good analytics person. We didn't have a very good, uh, we didn't have that many uh, uh, creative coders or uh, a visual animation specialist to, to, to kind of experiment with animation for news, these kind of things. So we, we kind of made this, this balanced team where there was enough of the traditional journalists and enough of the new experts to make it work. Important as well is to keep it short and to have a, a very dedicated deadline. So at least that you're not there to keep, to, to hold their hand forever. You kind of say, yeah, we want to uh, make a valuable change in a, in a specific amount of time. So we made a, a deal to be on the news floor for half a year. And from then on, we expect them to, to take innovation in their hands. And we're doing these very small sprints of two weeks. So it's not a long process where we will do one thing. We try to do 12 things in small chunks of two weeks. So they see a lot of result, a lot of impact, a lot of change. And the important thing is it's done better. It's done is better than perfect. So you show result, you show that what's working. And if it's working, you can iterate on it and make it better until it's perfect. So, because a lot of these people, journalists on the news floor, are not used to uh, do this kind of iterative startup way of working, lean way of working, we developed um, these kind of test cards for the journalists, so uh, which they had to fill with assumptions. So we believe that longer headlines will work better than shorter headlines. Could be an assumption you have of the, the, other, the other way around. We believe that visual videos will work better than uh, uh, just a link. So we will test this by posting on our Facebook page more visual uh, videos and less links, and we will measure this by looking at the results in our Facebook Insights, and we are right if the results are better. These kind of cards they started making and we started making, and then we follow this loop of insights, assumptions, building things, testing things, and measuring it again. And we do this every day, every day, until, and every day we shift a little bit until we know something a little bit better. And of course you have massive things you want to know, massive things, a lot of uh, assumptions, so you have to kind of prioritize them. What is very necessary, what's a high need for the newsroom, and what's very easy to do, let's do that first. What's a low need, what's difficult to do, let's, uh, let's put that at the, the, the end of, or the, the, the the end of the, the list, you know, let's not do that first. So that's a, another way for them to very visualize, to visualize the change, to see um, that it's small chunks and, and that's the way you can change things. So very concrete, we started doing things like this, you know, like formats and concepts that were really for, for social, very visual uh, prototypes, um, breaking news prototypes, um, uh, visual videos, uh, social videos as well, things like this.
So that's something we made now uh, for them. We're still testing this. We don't know if this is the best thing. We'll make a hundred of variations to see what's working best. Um, but we weren't doing it before. We were not making video that was purely for social, that you could understand without sound, that you could understand uh, without somebody uh, talking uh, uh, over it or without reading an article under it. Um, and we also realized that it's very nice to uh, make these good, great looking, uh, nice looking formats that nobody can make in your newsroom because they're not skilled, they don't know how to work in After Effects, they don't know shit about Photoshop. So uh, this is really nice if you have a, a, a creative team there, but if you know that the creative team will leave in like six months, you will have to find a solution to make it work. And it's not just hiring the right people because there's no money. No, no, there's no money anymore to hire new people. So how will we do this kind of thing? So we, we realized that we didn't only have to find out nice solutions because finding nice solutions is easy. Uh, certainly if you're a laggard like we, you can just copy the hell out of the rest of the world. So, But you also have to um, find solutions for newsrooms to make it. You have to build the workflows, change the culture, and change the tools that they're using. If they don't know Photoshop, if they don't know After Effects, make something that's easier. Make something that works for them. So we started making this toolkit. You know, it's still, we're still filling it up. So as you can see, it's in beta. It has a lot of small tools in it. But like this, the, this is a social image tool. They pick a grid, they say like, this, this is a breaking news template. They quickly say like, what a great session at the International Journalism Festival, I think. So they don't need a lot of skills to do this. No, no, no. <laughs> so, but you see, and they could put a, 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 an image behind it, but anybody who can make a text can really, and it looks nice, it's, it's, it's in our style, they can download it and put it on, on, and on the, uh, the website or on the, on the Facebook or, or whatever, we can make any kind of template. So we, you only need the one time to, to make this creative input and then later on people can start using it. Yeah, these are in-house tools, but once, once they work, we will put them out there uh, on GitHub uh, open source because we're a public broadcaster, so we want everybody to use it. Um, and the good thing is you can make this, once this works for uh, our newsroom, we can do this for our radio stations, we can do it for every brand we have, and we have 12 brands, so you develop it once and you can use it 12 times. Um, so, and we have, uh, uh, we're working on a, a, an online uh, tool for uh, um, scrolly telling for these long immersive uh, uh, stories. We're um, having a, a, an own subtitler to quickly put subtitles on videos, things like this. Everything should be done by the journalists in the news. We don't want specialists to do it because specialists are expensive and they're not scalable. You cannot scale ex uh, specialists, they're, they're just too expensive for that. Um, they have to come up with the great solutions and then journalists have to be able to implement them. Another thing we kind of uh, worked on was um, the mix, because uh, we can not demand from uh, all the journalists in the newsroom that they understand how social works, what the right kind of mix is, what the formats are they should use. So we started to develop a way for them to, to see the result. Um, so the, the, the people who are, who are now doing social, we kind of came up with a, a mix of uh, content domains, content types, and also formats. And whoever is doing social, they, they put in uh, what they post, in what kind of form they post it, what kind of uh, content domain it was. And uh, with this tool, we can see every day what's working, what's not working. So it's really, it's, it's a way to measure again what you're doing. So not just assuming that you're the one who knows how social works, you kind of measure what works, and you can uh, um, learn as a journalist on the, on the, on the floor with these kind of uh, dashboards. Um, and it actually, for the, we're still we're working, I think, three months now on the news floor. And what we see already on our social is that our reach, our likes, our comments, and our shares are really like, like booming. And it's, it's just because we didn't do anything before. 
so that was easy, but uh, we have results as well. And that's the only way we can convince the news floor, of course. What we're doing is just not something in the air, something nice that works somewhere there. No, no, it's really tangible. It has results. It works on the floor. And sometimes it also doesn't work. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense, and then we just kill it, you know, like... Uh, and, and we came up with four quick wins for them to do. Uh, this is now for Facebook, for um, their, their uh, Facebook page. So we say, like, yeah, use native video, not the whole time, but uh, in, in a certain percentage, because it's an unfair advantage. You have access to video, your video makers. It's really an unfair advantage, uh, certainly in regards to newspapers or, or other uh, um, uh, um, news outlets that don't have that many video content in their systems. Use the social templates with our hub tools, that are the tools that we create, because that's also, again, an unfair advantage we have. Uh, it's, it's very easy to do, and it has a, a bigger impact on your, on your audience. Um, um, monitor your content mix for social, and um, use Facebook Live also to, uh, because at this moment, Facebook Live is, is being promoted by Facebook itself, and it, it comes up in your, uh, um, in your timeline, it's being prioritized and things like this. It's not the only thing we do, but we put it in the mix. We say, like, if you do something on social, at least uh, be aware that these things work. So that, that's a, a few examples of, of how we build products on the news floor together with people and how we try to uh, keep, keep uh, uh, the culture in mind. It's also um, a new way to assess stories. Um, I think Damien was here, or he, I see you're back in the room, so a, a thing that I will be talking about, he knows a bit more about because he developed it. Um, a lot of startups are working with this business model canvas. They kind of, uh, before they start, they kind of start looking what are our key partners, what are our key resources, what's our value proposition, um, what our relationship with customers, but actually you can do the same for a story. Like, what's the problem we're talking about? What's the way of storytelling that we'll do? What's the value proposition to our user, to the, the audience? What will they get out of this? No, no. Oh, yeah. So, um, who are the stakeholders in this story? Who should we, uh, uh, who, who's accountable? Uh, what are our uh, specific audience segments we're targeting this story uh, to? How will we uh, publish and, and pack this, uh, this story? So it's a very valuable uh, adaptation of the business model canvas just for journalism. And, and Damien, who's the author of it, he's back in the room there. Uh, so please talk to him if you want to know more about it. It's a, it's a great tool for journalists. Can you share that I will put everything also on SlideShare. You will, if you, uh, at the end of the, 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 the session, uh, my, my, my details are on the slides, so just uh, find the presentation on SlideShare, so. Can, can you just quickly maybe give us back to the, the business model canvas model with journalism? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Um, just like, can you just maybe talk about the difference between a known tool that you're used for Damien, come here. Come up. It's your thing, so you should talk about it. No, no, no. We, we I have the time for, and it's. I, I like to let's put you here. Thanks. <laughs> the, the question was, what's the difference between the original business canvas and this one? The, the assumption is that news aren't products as uh, any other product. So my point was to make um, available a tool, and it's not perfect, um, really. There's many, many things to change in it. But it helps to, um, to have a process and a workflow which is easier for journalists to understand the whole uh, scope of our reports. That's just the purpose. And I'm using it with a journalism students in Belgium since three years ago. And we managed to crowdfund also our reports with that. It's not perfect. And if you have feedbacks, welcome. Uh, I will hear it. <laughs> Thanks. So certainly something to check out. It's also on the website of Damien, so check his Twitter handle. Uh, 
it's also a, the, the whole design thing, startup wave thing, is also a new way of making stories. Um, um, we had the, the luck of uh, inviting Jennifer Brandel from Hurricane to um, VRT, and she's specializing in translating design thinking to the tradition, to the, the story cycle, so the, to the journalistic story cycle. So as you can see, the traditional way of building stories is like, the newsroom is deciding everything, they're pitching stories, they're assigning stories, they're reporting, they're publishing, then they push it to the audience and then they expect feedback and then you get rants on Facebook. Um, so the audience comes last, they're never in the beginning of the process. And she wondered, what if we do it the other way around? If we start with asking questions and, and try to filter uh, what kind of things do people want? The exact way we are looking with our audience insights, what kind of product should we build for uh, uh, our audience? Let them also assign stories to uh, journalists by voting which story a uh, newsroom should work on, what, what they find is most uh, in, important for them. And maybe they can help with reporting as well. The whole idea of crowd, uh, um, crowdsourcing your, your intel, crowdsourcing your information. So it's, it's a whole other way of uh, looking at the, the traditional uh, story cycle. And if you map it on the, yeah, the, 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 the design thinking circle, you get this, this empathy, which is collecting community questions. You get the definition, which is um, the community that votes for favorites. The ideation, which is brainstorming how to best answer your questions together with your audience. And uh, prototyping becomes then reporting together with your uh, or the audience the story. And, and the test is, of course, gathering feedback after the story. And maybe you have to do another loop because the story is not finished yet, or you get a second story. So it's a really nice way to, um, to, to look at the story cycle. And if you want to know more about it, uh, certainly visit hurricane.com. Um, everything is there in detail. It's very interesting as well. And she has these uh, very cute um, curiosity and voting models. So you can actually embed this in your site and, and, and I let your audience participate in the story building. It's becoming a movement as well. It's a new way of teaching journalism. I think Damien is a, an example of that as well. But you see it in a lot of schools uh, in, in the States as well, where they do this kind of journalism plus design. So the design thinking, having your user or your, your audience in, in, in mind when you develop a story, when you develop a product, it's really something that, that's become a core of their, their package, you know, of the program. It's not just thing that, so, something that comes behind, it's something that goes together with journalism. So you always have your audience in mind. So I think that's an interesting evolution, uh, having this design thinking as, as part of the journalistic process. And in the end, it's also a framework for newsroom change. Uh, some, some really interesting blog about this is the Lean Newsroom, where uh, actually what we're doing at VRT is also described in a very interesting way. Things that you can do immediately, which is innovation, that's what we, what we are doing. Audience analysis, um, strategy, iterative processes, building things, that's really something you can do. From there, going to a larger strategy, and then changing the newsroom culture. And that's the hardest thing, of course. But making it tangible, making it really visible, what you do, works very well. So that's something we try to do at VRT as well, going from the immediate innovation strategies to a changing culture in a very large, opera uh, very large operation with more than 2,000 people, of course. Uh, the, the Lean Newsroom, uh, it's, a, it's a website, it's a leannewsroom.com, so you will find the whole text, this is a schedule uh, that's, that's on the air. So there's a lot of things happening simultaneously at this moment around lean thinking for journalists, design thinking for journalists. And we think it's also a new way to uh, build a community. Uh, what we noticed is that we couldn't change alone, that we needed specialists outside and that a lot of the times we didn't have all the skills and all the creative thinkers at our organization, so we also uh, build a network, a community, which is called OpenVRT. And OpenVRT is actually our community of creatives. It's all young people who are still studying, who just left school, who 
don't yet know what they want to do, but we organize events, we inspire them, we organize hackathons, we uh, uh, do build products together with them, and it's a way to um, uh, discover the new generation of makers, people who know it maybe a bit better what the young generation wants than uh, people who are already working 20 or 30 years in your organization. So that was the whole, it's a lot, uh, but I will put everything online. Um, before I, I go over to questions, I have like one more thing, which is uh, a personal project for the people who know journalism tools. Um, I, this month, journalismtools.io will launch. It's um, a project that's been going on for two, three years as well. And it was a way to kind of uh, map all the tools that are out there for journalists and uh, make them better accessible and better to understand. Until now, it was a Twitter feed and a Pinterest page, but you were not able to really search it very well. It was not very handy as a journalist, like I want something that's free, I can use on iOS, it has to edit pictures, and it has to be as easy as, uh, yeah, it has to be for a beginner. That kind of filtering was not possible until now, and uh, in the new platform, which you will see uh, here behind you, is uh, uh, behind me, you will see that it becomes a more uh, easy uh, platform to filter uh, tools, and you will get these kind of detailed pages where you will see the features, you will get a little excerpt, you see a link to, um, to a category, you will see tags, you will see specific categories you can uh, search on. So it's really a good tool to search for tools. If you have an ID in mind and you want to know like, do I have to build a tool myself or is there a good tool out there? Just uh, go out there and look for it. It will be uh, online very soon. So. Just write this down, it's, there is already a page where you can um, be notified, there will be a, news, a newsletter, so if you want to know, know when it launches, just go there. Well, that's it. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. If you want to know about uh, the slides, and uh, uh, I will put them online, I will tweet about it uh, on Ezra Iman or Journalism Tools, and I will put them on SlideShare. So. Rob. Some of my clients are interested in knowing what it takes to um, start from zero like you did three years ago. What do you tell them? How many people, how is that team organized and what skills do you need in that, inter, in t in that creative make team? Um, I would, um, in the beginning, keep it as small as possible. Um, we are, we have, yeah, one person who is a creative coder, so he can really assess technology and see what's necessary to build things. We have a visual creative because um, you yeah, actually also have to make things and, and make them look uh, visually very good. And then we have an audience insights person, somebody who can talk to users, who can uh, do analysis, who can look at and, and measure things and see if it works because that's a really important. And then you have somebody like me who's just trying to figure out the, the broader strategy and try to get the money and try to uh, shake as, as many hands as possible to make it work. So that's the, the basic setup. If you have four people, you can make it work. Hi, Ezra. My name is Guy Deegan. I'm a freelance journalist. Um, curious to hear about um, how you're applying design thinking um, so you're following the the five steps mm -hmm. of this process. Have you guys given any thought to maybe adapting the design thinking process to what you guys need and for media? Well, I, I don't think we we um, follow the steps really rigorously like IDEO. We I, I think what we're doing is already an adapted version, and um, the way we we uh, interview people is really adapted to the way we iterate uh, uh, things. It really becomes very quickly something that fits your organization. So don't, be, don't try to be too much by the book because then it, it won't work. You have really have to adapt certain things. Uh, uh, it's the same with the lean methodology. I think a lot of developers who would look at our way of interpreting lean, they would really get mad, you know, like they, they, they think we were like, uh, heresy, you know, like uh, not 
really very strict with uh, scrum masters and agile coaches and things like this. You don't have to do these kind of things. Uh, uh, it's more about the philosophy and, 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 and trying things and testing things. Don't be afraid to fail uh, and quickly throw away bad ideas. Don't hold on to things that don't work. So. More questions? <laughs> then I, oh, there. Hi, my name is Letizia. I work for Source Fabric. It's a technology provider, open mm -hmm. source. Um, I'm wondering, uh, in terms of change, because, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I think, the biggest challenge when you yeah. bring innovation in such a, a big organization. Um, what would be your advice to um, promote uh, this model of outsourcing creativity and innovation to your community, in large community of creatives and younger people? And, and how do you go about also creating maybe uh, a culture of collaboration with other uh, newsrooms and media providers mm -hmm. in your country or region or well, it's a very important uh, uh, question and, and something we're still struggling with. The, the way we shifted, because in the beginning, startup was really something outside the existing structures because we wanted to move fast, and we did move fast, but we moved so fast, we kind of lost the organization. They were like, okay, guys, you're way ahead of us, and you will never be able to implement what you're making into our organization because we just don't get it. You know, like, so we had to crawl back and we had to find ways to get closer to the organization. And the way we're doing this now is by um, finding early adopters that believe in it in, in the organization by creating mixed teams with them and making them the owner. So um, the, the social media team that we kind of uh, started up on the news floor, they worked together with us and they were seen as the the owners of the project. So everybody in the newsroom, they trusted them. They knew they're good journalists. We believed them. And they were our front, you know, like we were somewhere behind them and we were coaching them and we were helping them, but very humble, you know, like never never proud and like, hey, we know what you, what, what you, what you should do. No, no, we kind of tried to, um, yeah, convince and talk with them and work with them together. And they were the ones convincing the rest of the journalists because they were one of them. And that's that's working great. Um, so it's finding these early adopters, these kind of prophets that want to spread the gospel um, that works best. And of course, opening up, um, showing that outsiders of your organization bring value. We brought a an Italian uh, um, graphic animator who's very good in data journalism. We didn't have a graphic animator. We didn't have anybody in data journalism. Of course, if he makes something great, everybody sees like, okay, we don't have this at our news floor. We might need external talent for these kind of jobs. So there again, show the value, show the impact, see, let them see that it works. So. Um, you were saying you're responsible for getting the money in. Yeah. Is it like uh, a subsidy or you well, to investors? Uh, of course, VRT startup, um, as VRT is uh, funded with public money, and at a certain moment, uh, the board of directors, they kind of decided that they wanted this mechanism, so they al allocated a budget. But of course, every year, I have to kind of convince them let's keep the budget or uh, don't cut my budget. So in that way, I don't have to go and look for it outside the VRT, but I have to kind of convince them that it's necessary if the VRT wants to change, that they allocate a certain budget uh, to it, so. It worked. I, sometimes I think it would be even better for us as a VRT startup to really have to kind of earn our money, you know, like as a real startup, because we're not a real startup. We don't have to fight for our money, we get it. Uh, it would make us a bit sharper or leaner even if we really had to fight for money, but that's the way it is. Rob, you wanted to? Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the other questions is, is like, should, if you're building one of these, should it just 
work for the newsroom or should it work for the organization? Should it be independent so that you're also thinking about smart and innovative ways to bring sponsor messages in so that when you're creating new formats and new programming, mm. you're always considering, I know you don't have this problem because you're publicly funded, but many others do. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you only create it for a news, you're still missing the opportunities that might exist if you're yeah. able to create liquid yeah. video for live on Facebook that can be hosted and it, it you know, can be really powerful. Well, but if, if you're not thinking about yeah. smart ways to bring in ads and, and people for the ride, uh, well, you it, might be missing. It, it's yeah. double. We started as an, as an organization that was for the whole organization. So we would do fiction. Uh, we could rethink business models or advertisement or whatever. We, we could think about it. But then you come to the point that a newsroom wants to be independent and if you're an outsider, they're kind of reluctant to work together with you. So, and certainly in an organization as big as VRT with a newsroom of 400 or 500 people, you need an own department that's thinking ahead, you know, like uh, they can spare four people to think about the future. So they should spare four people. So you need two at least. <laughs> or two at least, you know, like, um, so yeah, so. Okay, cool. Thanks for being here, and uh, I'll put the slides online on SlideShare, and I'll tweet about it uh, on these Twitter handles. So, thanks a lot. A C C. Ti dico A uno due tre uno due tre.